Let's get all these parts out of here. Alright, so the parts list. Here we go. A trade for a 126. Some kind of waterproof switch. A little USB thingy. Three quarter by half inch. Three quarter coupler. Black box. Small network cable. Power for a Ultra 126 or 106. And power for the GLS 10. One inch conduit on the outside and half inch on the inside. I'm trying to go a little bit lightweight here. And I'm trying to put it all on this rolling rigid box. Let's see how it goes. Almost forgot this part too, but it's a 100 amp hour mini. Something like that. All right, so I think we've got to make a spacer for the back just to keep the battery pretty flat. I go at 10. Alright, we're gonna put uh, four of these one and a half inch screws into the wood down here. Alright, that should be the spacer. I'm probably just gonna double it up. I feel a little bit better about that. Alright, so the GLS 10 from mounting hole to mounting hole is exactly 9. So we'll probably build this out. We'll go with 11. Not good. Put some three inch screws back here. Gonna do 10 on the graph mount and then 10 for the little electronics box. Eight bolts holding it. So I got this socket, putting, putting this somewhere on the box. This goes on the battery. When you plug the battery cable into the socket, red goes to black, black goes to red. So you gotta keep note of that. And then figuring out how the switch works. It's on, off. Go to continuity. doesn't connect to anything. Turn it on. Those don't connect. Those connect. 
two switches. It's just this one and this one, this one and this one. So that's one circuit, and that's the other circuit. And it came with these little, like, kind of screw clamps. But I found out if you take them off, these clips fit right on there. So it's probably a better way to do it. So you're not dealing with no screws. All right, so this is the power cord for the 126. This is the power cord for the GLS-10. And this is the power for the USB. I'm gonna just try to fit them all inside one 10 gauge. Probably put these two together. And then these two together. And they all do fit inside there, so I'm not even gonna complicate it. I'm just gonna go 10 gauge here and 10 gauge here. I'm just leave that alone. Put all the grounds together. the wires through all right something like that these got to go to the back of the USB this has to go to the switch all right so remember the red one is really the ground because the socket and the battery plug doesn't match. Go like that, the black turns to red. That's a pretty good fit. All right, that feels good. The copper one's positive. Should be the box. Not that difficult. Alright, and the socket came with four screws. Throw those in. This is just to get a center line. We're gonna go center. Here, a race car. All right, some three quarter inch screws but not self-tapping. Right, three quarter inch screws again. This should stiffen up the whole box too. Alright, so we're just gonna adapt the charger so I can go to this plug or go straight 
So I can go straight into the battery. These ones line up red to red, black to black. But that's going to be on the battery. I already changed this fuse. I upped it to uh, 25. So it's a 25 now because this is a 20 amp charger. But if it blows, I just jump it up to a 30. This charger doesn't even have a fuse, so it has some kind of built in protection. Yeah, it's a 20 amp, 14.6. I'll cut it here. I'm using the 12 gauge size to cut the wire. This one really might be 10 gauge. Yeah, so this one's 10. And from the charger, it's 12. I always try to pinch it pretty close to the end because the metal's real flexible right there. And if you want to convert it back to uh, where it has clamps, you should be able to just plug this one in. Definitely get a way better feel with this wrench. Red to red, black to black. Let it go tonight. Alright, so it senses it and it's charging. Oh, it shut off, so it must be fully charged. 1397. All right, it's time to put the box on. All right, next thing we're gonna work on is strain relief. Make sure your O-rings are in there. That's why we're keeping all the wires to the right. Alright, I think we're good to go for it. This is off. This has power. It goes this way. Shove it in the hole. Next thing is fire in the hole. And we got power. 13.7. So we're looking good. Right, here's the transducer pole. It is one inch, I guess electrical conduit, and then half inch conduit inside of it. Here at the end is a half inch to three quarter adapter and then a three-quarter coupling. It's about an inch, and so the transducer bolts right up to it. Slides. And up here we got the half-inch conduit with the little speed connector. Fits in there pretty good. Another coupling. I decided to make the pole in two pieces. It's all just pushed together, nothing's glued. Just slide that in there. Should be able to turn the Transducer. That's the battery I'm sending back. Little garden tool holder. It's just sitting in there. Waiting to go in the water. Tucked away, all the wires are taped up. This has enough play. We could still go to the charger. Just gonna go with jigs. A measuring tool, rod holders. All right.